Hi everyone, Art Sherwood back with Chapter 4, Strategic Planning to Action. Plan, do, check, adjust, and then do it again. Chapter 4 fits into the entire process. Once the ends have gone to interpretation, to strategic planning, we finally get to plan, do, check, adjust. And here's an overview. First, I'm going to talk about the plans and planning themselves and differentiate between standard operating procedures and plans of action. Then we go on to do and talk about making it happen. This is the fun stuff. This is the stuff that really is out there and the activities that go on every single day. Check. We're going to talk about how to check and see how you're doing. And finally, we're going to talk about adjust and do talking about course corrections as you're moving through uh, time. So what's the practical challenge here? How do you take it from strategic planning to actual action on the ground? It's not enough to plan. We've got to actually act. How do we know if anything's getting done when we are acting? How do we know if it's working? And how do we adjust what we're doing as we're moving through the timeline in the plan? Well, one process that has been uh, put forward by Deming and should be familiar to many of you is plan, do, check, adjust. And just like it's worked for many conventional businesses, certainly works very well for us and our cooperatives as we try to bring ends a lot. Planning. Strategic plan to action on the ground. SOP and POA. These focus on actions. Our SOPs are standing operating procedures. These are basically designed to keep things the same. We have standard operating procedures in our deli for food safety. We have standard operating procedures for how we do our pricing and our labeling. These are things trying to keep things consistent. A POA, or a plan of action, is a one-time action plan, which is more like a project. It has a distinct start and finish that drives shorter-term activities. So basically what we're doing is we're making something new or different. So rather than SOP, which is trying to keep things the same, a POA, or a plan of action, is trying to change something. Each of these has measures for how we're doing. And each of these is about cause and effect, the underlying principle in all of our strategy. We do something and something happens. So let's take a look at this. Let's go back to that end related uh, to employees in Chapter 3. These were the strategic objectives. By 2014, we'll have a develop an amazing staff. The co-op implements open management and a quarterly and annual bonus program. The co-op ranks in the top quartile compared to other co-ops in the majority of the measures in the employee satisfaction survey. And the co-op will keep and maintain less than 30% turnover rate. How does this all fit? The cause and effect. So here's the effect. We just went through those three different uh, outcomes that we are trying to achieve by 2014. SOP, follow the employee's handbook. Keep things the same. Keep within those guidelines in that standard operating procedure. POA number one, implement open book management uh, feasibility study. So here's a project that's going to help make the effect of having open book management in place. BOA 2, build and implement departmental cross-training programs. These programs being built will ultimately help with the amazing staff. And POA 3, update and train employee grievance procedure. So again, a start in, a clear start and finish in here with this project, which will ultimately lead to the effects that are desired. Now, when we're talking about do, this is what happens every day. It's making ends come alive. It's really the critical component of making ends for everybody. Take a look at a, a screenshot I pulled off of the Blooming Foods webpage. All sorts of amazing stuff going on at Blooming Foods to make the ends come alive. Take a look at this. Local and education. Both of these being market for local and organic and increased local food knowledge are ends that the board of directors has decided upon. Another end is a model, sustainable, profitable business. And finally, there's going to be more str uh, strength in our co-op system. And you can see just right here on this one screenshot, the ends are really coming alive at Bloomington. From do, you want to go and say, how are we doing? We want to measure. We want to keep track of progress. We want to analyze what's going on, understanding how we're doing and what is the cause and effect that's going on. 
And here are some practical considerations. Number one, you know, use systems you have in place, including data collection systems and regular meetings. This doesn't need to create an entire new system. For your SLP, you're really looking for variations outside of it. Otherwise, you know, things are going on, uh, and that's uh, good if it's staying within the boundaries of your standard operating procedure. And for POAs, you're looking for progress. Is it complete? How much progress have we made? Um, and in meetings, one of the things that I talk about is having people report out saying, last week, this is what I accomplished uh, on my POA. Next week, this is what I'm going to accomplish. And then bringing any questions and concerns to the team so that they can help individuals trying to make plans of action come alive and move forward. A key is intentionally keeping track of data that will be used in final ends reporting, which can just really be a subset of your larger work over the year. And more about this will be talked about by Michael in the next chapter. So where are the ends? Ends for everybody. Be sure to that all the folks involved understand where ends are located in the strategy. Have people really understand and connect to these things, these being the driving forces behind the actions on the ground. Everyone's regular SOP and plans of actions should include advancing the ends directly or indirectly. So when you're creating these departmental or sub-departmental or team plans, really have them look at the ends and connect to how they're moving these things forward, particularly uh, in relation to the objectives that the management teams have set for the entire strategy for the organization. And have them measure and record and, and report out the, the progress being made. The recording and reporting should be consistent with your larger approaches for ends reporting. And again, Michael will talk more about that in the next chapter. So finally, we get to adjust, making course corrections. When you check, you want to ask yourselves, are we outside the boundaries of our SOP? Are there variations happening? Are we making adequate progress with our plans of action? And are we getting things done when we want to get them done? Are we actually hitting time deadlines? If not, we want to make some adjustments. So you might want to ask yourself as a leader, do the teams or do the folks that are trying to make this happen have the resources that they need? Do we have the right people involved? And what else can we adjust in order to make this work while we're making it happen on the ground? And finally, we have to realize that this is not just a one-time thing. Plan, do, check, adjust. It's an iterative process. We continue to do this as we move throughout the year, as we implement our action plans, which ultimately implement our strategy and then deliver on the promise of the ends. So Chapter 4 has taking us through the plan, do, check, adjust component of the ends-to-ends -ends process. In the next chapter, they'll be talking about ends reporting, and that will be with Michael Healy.